Hello everyone, in this video I will lend a voice to Daniel Tartaglia, because unfortunately he knows English like I know macaroni al pesto. In this video I will show all the equipment to learn how to make electronic circuits and how to tin. Very good products that I have been using for years and which cost very little. I also invite you to like it if you want to see my course on tin soldering, all commented in English. A curiosity about Italy. We Italians are famous abroad for macaroni, spaghetti, pizza, mafia, mandolino, but that's not it. We also like marinated bacala. Enjoy! The first item we are going to look at today is this gel mat. It is very famous for its practicality and versatility. All electronics enthusiasts must have this mat because it allows us to protect our work surface during tinning operations. You can organize all components during a disassembly operation because this gel mat provides many compartments. Ideal for tinning, the tin will not stick and can be removed very easily. By now, this gel mat has been part of my workshop for many years and I couldn't do without it. It is very cheap and you can wash it with soap and water and it is made to last for years. I recommend the purchase because it is an indispensable item for electronics lovers. This is another indispensable item for tin soldering. It is the third or sixth hand. It needs to be assembled because it is sold disassembled. The operation is very simple. You have to screw the six articulated arms to the aluminium base and then tighten them with a spanner. Be very careful when tightening because, being made of plastic, they could be damaged at the base of the thread. Once the clamps have also been fitted, the third coat is complete. I often use this tool when I have to do some tinning on PCBs, if the PCB is small, only two arms will be sufficient. If the board is very large and heavy, it is recommended to use more arms for better stability. When you no longer need it, you can close it in this way to take up little space. This is also an indispensable item for tinning operations and is very reasonably priced. Super recommended product. This is another essential item for electronics enthusiasts, a well-packaged digital multimeter. Instruction manual and accompanied by this soft, zipped handbag. Really very nice and compact, with a rubber protection like smartphones have. At the back we find the protection fuse and the compartment for inserting two 1.5 volt batteries. The large color display provides a visualization of the electrical quantities and on the panel we find four buttons to access the functions. In the package we also find two test leads with very soft cables and a probe for measuring temperature. It does not have a bracket to place it at an angle, but the display allows us an optimal view even if it is placed on the ground. With the voltmeter function, we can test the voltage of the batteries, for example. With the ohmmeter function, we can test the resistance value of electronic components. We can also test the absorption of electrical equipment with the internal ammeter. To take this reading, we have to change the orientation of the test leads because we are reading current. In this case, the current will flow into the multimeter through an ammeter transformer, which will report the current value on the large display. Indispensable also for testing PCB continuity, thanks to the powerful buzzer. But the most interesting thing about this multimeter is its ability to detect live electrical cables behind walls, in fact, this instrument has a phase detector. When the phase is detected, the digital multimeter will alert us with an acoustic signal. Great for avoiding puncturing electrical cables when we have to drill holes in the wall. Very nice and reliable instrument that I recommend to buy. This is without doubt the most important tool for tin soldering. The Smart Tin Soldering Iron. It features an OLED color display, three function buttons and a soft rubber finish at the end. Optional extras include a power bunk adapter, a very small chisel tip and a sponge for cleaning the tip. 
To use it, simply insert the tip, power it with a voltage of between 9 and 20 volts. To enter the options, simply press and hold the OK button for a few seconds. There are many functions to set, such as sleep time and minimum temperature. Useful function when you are not using your soldering iron to preserve the tip over time. We can also set three different temperatures with three recallable presets. The maximum temperature that can be set is 450 degrees centigrade, and it is very fast to reach. See it in action with other components in this series. This is a set of tweezers that are often used in electronics. They are very small and fit neatly in your handbag. They have a hard rubber cap as protection because they are very sharp. For some tin soldering jobs, they are very useful and versatile because they allow us to take very small components to be tinned on the PCB. In the meantime, we can see the quality of this soldering iron. I am soldering with a pin-to-pin -pin technique without using a flux. The tip, being very thin, allowed me to carry out the tin soldering in a very simple and different way. At the end of the job, the tin plating came out very well. All I had to do was clean it with isopropyl alcohol. Have you seen how important it is to have these little tweezers? Finally, a desoldering pump suction that works very well, accompanied by two gel tubes. Very nice, and all made of aluminium. The vacuum test went very well, but you should know that the piston is very hard to press. It is a tool used to remove electronic components. Sometimes totally removing the tin is very difficult with this tool because you have to be very quick before the tin cools down. If the tool works well, as in this case, removing an electronic component will be very easy, but you have to be very good and have a lot of experience. For best results, you have to be very quick to press the piston button at the right moment when the nozzle is fully in contact with the PCB. The highlight of this desoldering pump is the possibility of being able to make spouts to the size and shape we want. I usually prefer the angled cut because it allows me to remove the tin more easily. This way, we can always hold the tool at the same angle, even when removing the tin. Besides being functional, it is also very nice, but I have found that the piston is very stiff, a tool I would recommend buying. This is an item I have been using for several years. It is a tool for cleaning the soldering iron tip. It consists of two elements, the opening container and the copper abrasive sponge. Don't worry, it is not an object that will ruin the tip of your soldering iron, but it must be used with care. When the tip is heavily soiled with residual tin, simply insert it into the abrasive sponge and make a circular motion. The tin will be completely removed. However, I always recommend also using the classic sponge, which must be wet for better cleaning of the tip. I recommend the purchase. To make electronics and printed circuit boards, we also need electronic components. I recommend these kits because this way we can have all the components when we need them, like these sockets for integrated circuits. I do not recommend soldering integrated circuits directly onto the PCB, especially if you are working on a prototype. This, for example, is a kit with the most commonly used chips. Other components that must never be missing are resistors. This is a nice complete kit with all the most used values and they are also very accurate. Ceramic capacitors should also not be missing, almost always used as filters in circuits. These are the most commonly used diodes, which we normally find on electronic circuits to avoid voltage feedback. Another very important component, the transistor. This is a really complete kit with more than 800 parts. If I can give you a piece of advice, check the value well before soldering it onto the PCB. It could have got mixed up during transport. Another component you absolutely must have is the electrolytic capacitor. 
This is also a fairly complete kit for making any electronic circuit. Here you can find all the values with voltage and capacitance. But how do you test electronic circuits with a breadboard? A special board with contacts in parallel that allow us to make any circuit in the sprimental phase. In this way, we can see how it works before proceeding to PCB production. As a last tool, here is the component tester. It is very nice, with a color display and a socket for inserting electronic components. It comes with a USB cable for charging and three LEDs for testing components directly on the PCB. Perfect for testing whether your transistor is working. The display also shows the model and circuit diagram. You can also test the ceramic capacitors, where it will be shown not only if it is working or not, but also the capacitance value. We can also test LED diodes. In addition to seeing the flashing, we can also see the supply voltage shown on the display. Resistors and many other components can also be tested, except for integrated circuits or components that have programmed logic. Also interesting is the possibility of testing components without necessarily desoldering them from the PCB through these three tweezers. Did you know that you can also test your remote control? Thanks to the infrared port, you can see whether your remote control sends a signal or not. Truly a must-have item if you are a lover of electronic circuits. I hope you enjoyed this video, even though this is not my voice. It is certainly preferable to watch a video with a narrator's voice than a video with only background music, even if the voice is not that of the original creator. Let me know in the comments if you enjoyed this type of content. Find it all in the comments and thank you for watching this video. And please like it if you want to see more items on the subject of electronics and tin soldering.